Hi, I'm Natalie Bouchard, and you're listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody. We were we took a field trip today, and we are at the Construction Forum, the Raleigh Construction Forum, and we have several alliance members and industry experts with us today. We're going to, we're going to go around the room and start with introductions. Thank you so much. I'm Ron Adams. I'm the Vice President of Risk Management for Baker Roofing, and glad to be here. So good to partner with the Department of Labor. Uh, we certainly respect everything that they do. Uh, we're all working for a, a safer workplace. Again, I'm Brett Sonnegaard. I'm a district manager with United Rentals in their Trent Safety Equipment Division. I'm on the board of directors for NUCA, and we're here as a, an alliance partner uh, through the NUCA organization. I'm Roger Richards, safety director for Sanders Utility Construction Company out of Charlotte. I'm also the vice chairman of the safety committee for AGC, and on behalf of them, we appreciate the alliance through the AGC. I'm Wendy Shepard. I'm a safety and health specialist for the industry expansion solutions within NC State and with Southeastern OTI, and we're very happy to be partnering with the Department of Labor in this effort. My name is Marcy Collier. I'm the training supervisor with the North Carolina Department of Labor Occupational Safety and Health Division, and I'm very happy to be here today with all of our alliances and industry partners. Marcy, maybe you could just open this up by explaining a little bit. What was the purpose of the construction forums and and opening this up? Sure. This week, May 6th through 10th, is the National Safety Stand Down for Falls and Construction. And part of our effort in outreach and training and education is to host a couple of events that would include our alliances and industry partners and specifically focus on the top four hazards in construction and more specifically falls. This week we had two construction forums, one in Concord, that was on Tuesday, and we had 43 attendees. We had a lot of last minute cancellations, but we also had walk-ins, people who had not registered at all, and they just sort of saw it the night before, and they said, I'll go and participate in that. Today, the final count was 56 attendees, which makes our total count for the week for the construction forums, 96 attendees, and I think that's a pretty good outreach for the fall stand down just for these two events. We also had a couple of speakers bureaus going on and we had a a Labor One event with Builders Mutual, another alliance who participated in this event today who's not here with us now. That's awesome. What is the significance of these events for each of your entities? I think it's an opportunity to, to bring uh, like minds together, people who are all focused on safe workplace and how we work with each other. You know, a lot of our big big contractors, there are multiple employer work sites, so every company has their, their own safety director, but how do we all kind of, uh, as I like to say, fly in the same direction. Yeah. Awesome. I would say outreach for, for NUCA, um, as well as United Rentals. Uh, excavations are a very dangerous uh, place to work, especially if you're uneducated to the dangers uh, that are present in an open excavation. So part of our presentation today was understanding the types of equipment that can be placed in an excavation to, to make it safe for the workers working in that particular application. One of the biggest things that Ron just said is reaching out to the others to educate them on the safety products, materials that's out there that all companies should be utilizing in their day-to-day activities. And to go along with the outreach, we just like to share the outreach materials that Federal OSHA provides to us so we can get it out to all of the agencies so they don't have to start from scratch and make their own training opportunities. We have already been provided this goal through Federal OSHA to be able to give you the training material so you can go out and share with the rest of the folks. I thought today it resonated that training is really the biggest factor here. Why is training so important? Well, ultimately training is important because we have to teach our employees how to work safely. It's one of those things that's not really common sense anymore and construction sites are dangerous and there's a number of hazards that a lot of folks are not aware of when they go into a construction site and so training them on the hazards that could be or that may be there is is super important. Somebody gave a stat today that I I think it was 60 percent of the accidents happen within the the first six months. The first six months. Yeah we at at Baker we we look at a lot of indices to determine you know 
when we do have accidents, what is the root cause, um, who's involved and why. And as a result of the t statistic looking at, you know, 60% of our injuries occurring within the first six months, we developed a mentoring program. So when we hire new employees, they're assigned to a mentor, and that mentor worked with them for the first five to eight weeks to make sure that they understand what they need to do. Because roofing is, a, is first of all, it's a difficult job. It's hot. You're working at heights. There's a lot of activity. There's, there's swing stages. There's cranes, there's many things that, that are, are in and around you. So you want them to be very aware of the hazards that's going all around them. So going through the mentoring program, make sure that they understand not only how to do the work at a high quality level, but to be aware of what's going on around them. That's, that's a great program. That's and each company should come up with a way, and I like that, Ron. Mm -hmm. What we do at Sanders is when a new hire comes on and goes through orientation, he's presented a green hard hat. Right. He's a greenhorn. So it does not matter which crew he goes to or if he's moved from crew to crew, they know how to recognize a new employee versus a seasoned employee up to a foreman by the colors of the That's hard hats. That's a great idea. So that program, it's all left up to his foreman when he per se graduates to a blue hard hat. It could be three months, it could be six months, it could be a year till that foreman feels like he has that education at what we do and can recognize the hazards prior to him moving That's up awesome. to a blue heart. Are you all seeing improvement there? Yes. Great. Wendy, did you have anything to add there? Or? That's what we're seeing whenever we do our training initiatives through Southeastern OTI when we're doing our authorized trainers and when we're seeing all these new folks coming through and trying to learn the standard but then ultimately trying to teach the standards when we do our classes and it's difficult. One of the things we also recognize is that we have daily huddles every morning. Every crew has a daily huddle before they start their job. They have stretch and flex. You know, a athletes just don't go out and play a game. They have to flex their muscles before they get started. And what we realized is that the foreman was doing the daily huddle every morning saying, okay, we're going to work in this sector of the building. This is what our application is and uh, everybody signs it because it, they have to be within you know, compliance, right? Mm -hmm. So we found out that they were pencil whipping it, and so we said, well, how do we change that? Well, what we do is each member of the crew has to do uh, a safety huddle, at, you know, they, they round robbing it during the entire week. So you don't have one person doing it all the time. And what we found out from that, once you get even a laborer involved, then they feel like that they're more connected with what they're going on rather than just being you know, Ron, pick up the trash guy. That's awesome. And I know with the construction stand down, Marcy, maybe you can speak to this. They were encouraging companies all across the state, well, really the nation, to take a minute, to take a break. Yes, that's what the National Safety Stand Down for Falls and Construction is all about. It's about standing down for safety in federal OSHA, North Carolina OSHA, our alliances, industry partners statewide. We were encouraging people to stand down for safety, just to have a conversation like we were talking about today. Let's have a conversation about this. And I think that drives it home for people. We heard so many stories today about people being injured on the job site, and that really drives it home. I mean, when you get the heart involved and you remind people that it's about their family, their spouse, their child, their parent, it makes a, a huge impact on people in the workforce and it's very important to um, keep driving that message. And for those folks who don't know or weren't able to come to this particular fall stand down week, it's usually the first week in May every single year through Federal OSHA. So if you didn't get an opportunity to come this this year for 2019, please find something for 2020. Next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the attendees here today had one thing that they took home with them from all the presentations in the event, what, what would you hope that they take home with them? Protect their employees. Empathy. I think there's not enough empathy in the world. And so I think if your employees realize, or through our presentations and discussions, that we have empathy for the people in the room, they take that with them to show that we care. I think companies should be run like families, not like companies. Yeah, so important. I want to piggyback on Ron that the companies that were represented here have a really great safety culture and that can be implemented through any employer 
that you may run into. I mean, it's not just something that, that's just a few and far between, that everybody can have that culture if you just put the time and effort into it. I would go farther to say, I think, general awareness of the dangers present in some of the topics that were covered. What you, really, what you don't realize is that a lot of construction workers will have crossovers in their daily activities or even their weekly activities, so they may never get into an excavation, for an example, for, for the first year of their employment, and all of a sudden, through whatever might happen on a construction site, they may have to dig a trench and be in there. They're not aware of the dangers. Right. The guy that's digging the trench may find himself up on the roof at the request of somebody without any knowledge of the dangers of being on a roof. I mean, I guess you look over, you know, if you fall down, it's going to hurt you, but you may not know that, hey, there's no guardrails over there. I shouldn't be near the edge of this. And, and the actual workers are the ones that have to be educated because you can't watch them all the time. On a large construction site, it's very difficult. If they don't have that knowledge, then there's a very good chance that they could get hurt, especially in the application they don't do every day. So it's just that split second. It's that quick. It's it's unfortunate when it happens yes. and we see it every year and that's why this effort is so important I will say you know North Carolina has made great strides I know that we've mentioned this before but the injury and illness rate for North Carolina is for private industry is at an all-time low thanks to the help of the alliances and the organizations that we work with the North Carolina Department of Labor Marcy with education training and technical assistance it's a team effort we hope to continue this for many years to come. And maybe one day North Carolina will have zero falls. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see that day. I think from the OSH perspective, we want people to know that we're not just regulators. We care. Most of the people that work for us do it because it's a passion for them, not so because true. there's yes. big money in it. We're all working for the state. Most of the people who work for us care. We really care. We're not just regulators, and we want people to get the information they need so that they can be safe at work. It's very important. There is a former standards officer and federal compliance officer that used to work for us that said something to me when I first started, and he said, most of these standards are written in blood, and that really drove oh, wow. it home for me. Yeah. That these standards were written because someone was injured on the job or there was a fatality on the job. And it's so important to know that even though we're a regulatory body, we care. We're out there preaching and teaching and sending that message because we really care about what's happening on the job site. It's so important. Just to go along with that too, companies has got to realize too that if they're not sure of something, pick up the phone and call your local OSHA office. They're there to help. They're not there to bash you or whatever but if you're not sure of a regulation or you're not sure of PPE that you need to get or something like that reach out to them they're glad to, to give you that information thank you that's so true and uh, speaking of which Natalie why don't you mention some of our social media outlets out there because a lot of information and even our website that it's available you can follow us or you can access information through our website. So our website is labor.nc.gov and we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, and of course this podcast, you're probably listening to it on YouTube. And those are all just resources that we use to get the word out. Wendy, you mentioned you have a wonderful new program for the younger generation. Through the Susan Harwood grant through Federal OSHA, we actually have a uh, young workers initiative specifically for construction and you can find that through Southeastern OTI, free of charge, basically just scroll down to the bottom of the page and find those initiatives along with our agricultural safety initiative, Tractor Talks, that we have. So all of those are free for you guys to download. That's awesome. Does anybody else want to share their website or any information about your business before we wrap this up? One of the things that Baker is so very proud of, we've been on, a, on, a, on about a nine-year march uh, to try to get our experience modification factor down to 0 0.60 and we just found out last week it is 0 0.69 which is the first time it's been below seven now what does that mean that means that we're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in workers compensation premium but it also differentiates us from our competition most general contractors now when they're hiring subcontractors are looking at your safety record they want to know how many ocean inspections have you had how many serious or non-serious violations have you had? They want to look at your experience modification. They want your, at your TIR rate and your DART rates. And 
ours uh, at Baker Roofing are 20% of national average. So that gives us a competitive edge with our, our contracting partners that, that our competitors don't have. So when it says safety pays, it does. It, it puts hard dollars back into the pockets of, of the stockholders and the owners of your company. That's a great point. Thank you guys for tuning in and thank you all for being here. This is super important and we're glad that we could have this talk. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate thank it. You. Thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. Remember, your safety is our priority.